what's going on youtube it's me inked pool coming at you with my first series called how to uh where i will be going over the tier 8 through 10 um tech tree ships and what i recommend regarding um upgrades and preparing yourself if you're going just grinding for the yamato so if you see this video before the yamato video this will be in preparation to you to get to the yamato um so before I go delve any further, I would like to state that this is all my opinion. There will be people that disagree with me. There will be people that probably have different builds than me. And uh, that is okay if you have a difference of an opinion. Um, if you're one of those people that are watching this video, feel free to leave a comment below on, you know, your opinion on what you think could be better or, you know, just to help uh, whoever's wanting to learn about this ship line out. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. I'm not saying that I'm the best player in the world or, you know, none of that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's start with the equipment. As far as equipment goes, uh, we'll start with the upgrades. Um, for the first upgrade, I recommend Main Armaments Modification 1. However, depending on how competitive you are, like if it's ranked battles or clan battles that are tier 8, you could also take Damage Control Party Modification 1, which will increase the consumable action time for your uh, Damage Control Party, which is very nice. Um, second uh for the second upgrade i recommend the damage control system modification one as well um, because you want to reduce the chances of catching fire or flooding i do not really see a situation where you'd want to take engine room protection i've played about 30 40 games maybe 50 in the amagi and i've never had my um engine knocked out or anything so damage control system modification one i would highly recommend now for the third, I highly, I don't really see any other situation where any of these are useful. So I recommend the aiming system modification one because of the maximum main battery shell dispersion is reduced by 7%. So that will help. The biggest problem with um, Japanese battleships that I've noticed is when it comes to vertical dispersion, it either lands too short or it lands too high. So with this, this will increase the likelihood of you being able to land more citadels, dev strikes, first even your first bloods you know stuff like that so i do not really see where anybody might disagree with me on this i may be main battery battery mad mod modification too i good lord can't speak english uh maybe that'd be the only one i could see maybe but uh i me personally i i will never take anything besides this so uh for, this, for the fourth one uh you can continue to take damage control system modification too if you really want to depending on your play style even though you do want to sit back in this type of ship because they're snipers um you're getting close quarters is it really becomes a problem because your weaknesses start to show you're very squishy on the sides and you're very vulnerable you could also take propulsion modification one to um do some throttle play at long, long range with battleships you know slow down speed up quicker you can do some throttle play with battleships, make them miss a whole lot more when you're playing at long range. However, I do recommend steering gears modification one. Um, the turn time on the Amagi, what is the turn time? Is about is 870. That's it's pretty um, interesting to say at least. Like, what's let's take a let's take a look at the where is my Massachusetts? Look at the turn time on the Massachusetts 710. So. I would probably, if you're going to keep this ship, I would highly recommend taking the, um, um, for, I would probably recommend steering gear mods so you can dodge torpedoes, obviously. It'll, well, it'll help you avoid more torpedoes in the long run. Um, so out of all these, I highly recommend the third one. As far as the fifth one goes, um, concealment system mod one. I don't really see where you want to take torpedo lookout system or ship consumables mod one. So, and the reason why I highly recommend this is not only does it help with your detectability range, it also helps with the dispersion of shells from enemy ships. So there's five percent chance that a or five percent more chance that a shell will not hit you with this modification. Next part, captain builds. Everyone's favorite part after the commander rework. Oh man, it's absolutely insane. So as far as the first row goes, um, I'll go through these briefly. I don't see a world where you'll really need gun feeder. Obviously, maybe late game, you may need it. It, it would come in handy late game, potentially, to switch quickly to DDs. Um, you don't need demolition expert because you're going to be firing AP like 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, as far as 
consumable consumable specialist uh i could see somebody taking this i don't recommend it but if it's something that you really really want i can understand to a certain degree why however i would recommend emergency res repair specialist which helps uh, the reload time of your damage control party and your repair party uh consumable which will heal your ship as far as incoming fire alert goes, you don't really need it. As long as you are you have situational awareness or good situational awareness, I do not recommend this. Um, however, if you don't, you might consider taking it um, in your situation. It's okay if you don't have good situa situational awareness, by the way. I'm, it's just uh, where you're sitting most of the time, most cruisers can't really hit you as long as you're playing correctly. Um then you should not have to worry about taking this as it's not as necessary. Preventative maintenance. I don't really get my modules knocked out. Like as far as like my turrets and you know stuff like that. My steering gear doesn't really get knocked out. My engine doesn't really get capacitated. So this is kind of probably a useless talent to take personally in my belief. Um, I would not see any situation you want to take this at least in the Yamato line. Uh, as far as the second row goes, Grease the Gears, obviously you are going to need Grease the Gears. If you do not take this talent, your play will be significantly hindered. Because the turret traverse speed, even base, is very, very, very slow. So with this, this helps it. It's still going to be slow, even by the time you get to the Yamato. But this will make your life just a little bit easier. Uh, let's see. Inertia fuse for HE cells. Obviously, same as de uh, Demolition Expert. You don't need it. Um, you're going to be shooting AP 99.9% .9 of the time. I recommend Brisk. Uh, the battleships in the Japanese line aren't the fastest, but this helps you kind of... If you're undetected, I feel like you'd be able to resp reposition just a little bit quicker. Not much, but if you're, they'll misjudge how quick you are. And with Brisk... They're going to assume that you're going to be a little bit slower, so you might put yourself in a situation to where you can get a really good playoff. Um, I also will... I don't have a 21-point um, commander yet, but I do plan on taking Vigilance. Um, I suggest this because a lot of DDs, at least in random battles, like to try to sneak past everybody and go like after ships like the Yamato or Carriers, and they just try to like you know get that, that uh, player out of the game. Because the Yamato is a very important ship in the game. Um, priority target. This is personal preference. I, however, totally disagree. You should not take this talent. Maybe when it was a one-point talent, I could see why you would take it. But now that it is too... I just can't see why you'd want to take it. It's too expensive for what it is used for. Yes, people will tell you that it helps with knowing when somebody's torping you. When they're not torping you. However, know the relative location of where the torp is torps are coming from sorry then you should be able to maneuver maneuver um accordingly before you get too uh you know screwed up aa defense and asw expert um you could take this i do not suggest it however the a is really bad on the yamato line and i mean the amagi it's bad on the amagi it's bad on the izumo and it's going to be bad on the yamato um, you could take this if you want to do like an anti-air build, if you're getting harassed a lot, if you play a lot of random battles, I could see you taking this potentially. However, I do not recommend it probably for competitive play at the moment. Third row, super heavy AP shells. Um, now I can see somebody taking this hundred percent. I don't disagree with it. I personally do not want to take it though, because of the fire extinguishing time and flood recovery time. It's too much. And uh, people like to target the Yamato, so that is a significant, uh, a significant nerf to the capabilities, in my opinion, of the Yamato. If you take that, I can see. However, people will take it. I'm not. I would not be surprised if people disagreed. Um, I, I could take it one day myself. I don't know. Um, however, at the moment, I do not see the benefit in it personally. Uh, you don't really want to go long range secondary battery shells. I mean, I'm not going to delve too deep into this to waste your time. Just, I wouldn't recommend it. Adrenal Rush. Adrenal Rush is like good on every single ship in the game, just about. Uh, I would highly recommend this because obviously it helps with your um, main battery reload time. 
um, for each 1% of HP lost. And it'll increase the amount of AA damage and secondaries and airstrike armament reload time. You know, it, it minus 2.2% every 1% HP loss. Like, it'll benefit you a little bit. And I highly recommend it. As far as uh, basics of survivability, I recommend this because this helps, uh, obviously, with fire extinguishing, flood recovery, and module restoration time. The, really, I recommend this on almost probably every single battleship in the game currently. Um, and there's not really else much. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. If you, uh, I'm not going to delve too deep into it. Um, improve repair party. At three points for m minus 0.8%. Repair. Uh, I, I I don't see where this is going to be necessary. I I just really don't. I can see where you take focus firing training in, um, at, with AA defense and ASW expert. There is, I think there used to be. I don't know if there is now. There is a build a uh, anti air build. So I would, if you're going to take this, I recommend you also taking focus firing training, just to increase the amount of AA, just to make it at least like mediocre to semi good um, other than that I mean I personally would not recommend this I would recommend the build that I'm currently going with at the moment um, okay so furious um, I could see where you would take this however you shouldn't be really getting in a situation to where you have four fires I don't know it's kind of debatable but I don't know. In late game, really late, late game, it will benefit you. But if it's to that point, depending on how many ships you, there are left, you know, it, there's just too many variables that go into play to make this um, this uh, commander skill worth it, in my opinion. Same with uh, same as this one. Same as the long range secondary battery shells. I do not recommend manual secondary battery aiming. I'm just gonna move on for that. Close quarters combat. Self-explanatory. Do not recommend this. You should not be going out of your way to be in close quarter combat. Um, emergency repair expert. I could see a situation where you would want to take this. I, however, I'm not 100% set yet. I'm either going to take concealment expert and fire prevention expert or emergency repair expert and fire prevention expert. I'll probably end up taking these two because regardless, when I shoot, <laughs> I'm going to be detected in the Yamato. As far as Concealment Expert, I do recommend this. These are one of the three. These three, you, you have to pick. Uh, I, I recommend all three of these, but you got to pick two because there won't be enough points. Um, if you're going to take Concealment, though, I would highly recommend taking Fire Prevention because you don't want four fires on your ship. That is miserable. Um, do not, I would not recommend emergency repair expert with concealment because if you catch on fire and you will catch on fire in the Yamato, it's going to be, it's going to suck. It's going to suck a lot. All right. With that being said, guys, we're going to go to the next part of this video, which will be, you know, positioning and just some tips for the tier eight, uh, leading up to tier 10. All right, guys, here we go. Welcome. Uh, welcome to part two of the video. Um, if you made it this far, we're going to be talking about positioning and uh, just general tips. So, as far as the Amagi goes, I highly recommend, if you're playing the Amagi, that you are going to be um, sitting back and utilizing your spotting aircraft with your range. Um, you don't really want, as I said in the previous part with the commander and the... Um, equipment build you really don't want to put yourself in a position to where you will be easily able to expose your broadside and get cross-fired um, because the Amagi is a relatively speaking very squishy ship now here as you can see my thought process I was if I'm being 100% honest with you guys I had been grinding Amagi games like 10 of them to get a post worthy one and this was the one so i was heading towards d because i figured that's where the whole enemy team was be gonna be then i realized you know what maybe i should probably stay over here and be a good teammate so i figured i would position myself to be sort of towards the middle um i'm gonna be angling yeah towards uh i guess c a little bit 
and uh, heading that way and seeing what we can create from that. Right now, I got a, what is that, a cruiser to my right. So I figured maybe I can create some crossfire. I got another battleship and two cruisers coming over here. Three cruisers, apparently. Good Lord, I didn't even realize that during the game. And uh, I figured, you know what, they're all positioning to go, like, on the far end of A. So I could potentially create some crossfire opportunity. At least this was my thought process at the beginning. And uh, obviously, you see me slow down here. I'm hoping that we get some detection going so I can know what is the current position of the enemy team so I can position myself correctly. I unfortunately got detected, so I, I can't remember what it was. What was it that detected me? Was it? I think it was the... Um, wasn't the Bismarck. Okay, so here, this is what I, I like to start. I pop my spotter. He is broadside. I wait a second to see if he's going to start turning, and he doesn't. So I just shoot my shells to where I think I can hit him. So it's like six clicks out or on the thing, and I get three pins. Not bad. 10K salvo. Not too bad. The Indenberg is what spotted me. So then I see him. Unfortunately, I didn't hold my shells long enough, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to reload in time, so I switch my focus back to the Bismarck. Um, so this is what you should probably implement in your play if you have not already as you can see I'm doing some throttle play I slowed down and as you can see the Bismarck does this really well, too He also does some throttle play and I missed the entire salvo on him. He just he turned in I figured he was gonna speed up But uh, unfortunately he did not and I missed the whole damn salvo so Now here you'll see I start getting targeted a little bit um, However, they're not focusing me and see, it did some throttle play here. I'm going to speed back up. Bismarck's starting to turn a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? He's probably going to straighten out. So we're going to shoot another salvo at him. And what do we get here? Did I get a citadel on him? I can't remember. Oh, we got two pins and, and four pesky overpins. Let me tell you, overpins in the Japanese line. My goodness. So again, as you can see, I'm sitting relatively far out. Um, obviously, the Bismarck and the North Carolina can reach me, but I'm not worried about it um, because dispersion on, obviously, a German battleship is pretty atrocious. However, once you get the hang of it, um, it's not as bad as you really think it is. So here, I realize, okay, I'm doing a little too much throttle play, and I need to start moving before they figure out, you know, figure out my jip or whatever, and they get, they get me zeroed in. And I take some pot shots at the Bismarck just to see if I can get any damage. I figured he turned left, but he didn't, unfortunately. And I got uh, one penetration. Now here, oh man, I was licking my chops. I thought, I'm about to get a dev strike. This is going to be the perfect YouTube video ever. And I'm like, you know what? This is going to make it over that mountain. So I shoot my salvo. I kind of fuck it up because I, I did uh, like the staggering shots to the Bismarck. And I, I totally fucking forgot to uh, wait a couple seconds. But unfortunately, I get only two fucking overpins, dude. I was so upset. Let me tell you. So, at this point, I'm looking. I looked over to my left to make sure, you know, what's going on over there. Making sure there's nothing there that I got to be worried about. Then I start focusing my attention on the North Carolina. Now, here, I could be putting myself in a vulnerable situation. However, with the current state of the game, you got the Bismarck and the Indenburg behind the island over there, so I have a little less to worry about. And I figured this North Carolina was going to turn to go behind that rock, and he did. So I, I held my shot. I lined it up. And I recommend aiming at waterline for battleships, like, about 80% of the time. And this is what you get. A double Citadel. That was real nice. It was real noise. It felt good. I'm like, you know what? This might be the game that I could post to YouTube after grinding out like, I don't know. I think it's like eight Omagi games and I could not get a good game to save my life. So here I want to stay to the right um, because I'm looking on the mini map at this point and I'm seeing our left flank or our, uh, I'm sorry. Our D flank is losing uh, the objective over there, and right here, I was like, "Oh, here's here it is. Here's my um, here's my first kill, and uh, one overpin." Oh, uh, so as you can see, obviously, you. I do apologize. 
I don't know if my volume's still going. Okay, sorry. I accidentally unplugged my mic. I got a wired mic. Or my headset, sorry. Um, so you get one upper pin. So you will, as you can see, the vertical dispersion is atrocious sometimes. And I think the longer range, the better the dispersion is. I don't know. It feels like it, it's better. So here, the I wait for the Bismarck to kind of smooth out his broadside. And I line up my shot, and I don't know. I don't think I Citadel him. No, but three pins and two overs. In one ricochet, obviously, as you can see. So here, like I was saying earlier, though, I got sidetracked because I accidentally kicked my uh, headset off, basically. I yanked out the cord. Um, I was looking to my my other flank and seeing how they were doing and they were losing the flank So I was like, okay, so I need to you know 100% focus over here now this Bismarck guys. I Don't know what was going on here And Bismarck if you somehow by chance watch this video, please tell me why you weren't moving Because wait, you know what? I think he types it in the chat like he couldn't he said no reverse question mark or something i think i don't know what he's doing he's not it doesn't even look like he's trying to move it just looks like he's just like in la la land or something i don't know so here i just put a few shots at different like levels just to just in case he backs up or something unfortunately he did not move the entirety of that uh since he's since he, since he had been stuck, he did not move. So I was just a little curious to what the hell that was about. Yeah, I can't go reverse. Question mark is what he said, dude. I felt, and after I read that, I felt bad for him. I guess he got, he, uh, I've heard that you can, like, if you hit an island at the perfect angle, you can, like, literally not get out of some, like, spots, which I found quite amusing, to be honest. Um, at the time, I was like, what is he doing? Like, it didn't really click in my head. Now, at this point, I go ahead and I'm like, all right, we've won this flank. I'm going to head. I wanted to head over directly to D because that's where the rest of the ships are, except for the one in the middle of the map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip forward to where this uh, obviously is more relevant. Not me and the Bismarck uh, rubbing, touching tips. That's not really uh, content, as one would say. All right, now, as far as this Fiji goes, I am not 100% certain what in God's name this Fiji was doing. Uh, he's about to get popped up here, and uh, let me tell you something. Now, I did get a little antsy with my shot, okay? I will get spoil that, and uh, it's a doozy to say the least. Um, he goes on the tech and he pops his smoke, however, the Bismarck pops his hydro and, uh, he, wait, no, is Bismarck over? Yeah, Bismarck lights him back up with his hydro, I think. And, uh, I was like, okay, he's got to come this way. There's no way he doesn't because we're not detected over here and he doesn't, I don't think he really realizes we're over here yet. And, uh, I take my shot. I jump the gun, I think, a little bit. But nine overpins nine overpins i couldn't really see where that entire salvo landed but it didn't look that bad i was like you know what i'm gonna get this kill i'm gonna get it and uh unfortunately i did not so we're up to 105k damage two citadels and 48 target hits almost 1 million potential damage too not that bad of a game and uh we still got plenty of time to get over to the other side so as far as positioning goes um whether you're in the amagi the ismo or the yamato i do highly suggest that you sit back you snipe um obviously this is a situation there's only um f what five ships left yeah five ships so you can you have a little bit more flexibility let me let me say that so right now i'm like okay i can play at medium range and uh so that's what we're doing we're just gonna play at medium range here i thought okay this is it this is it we're gonna get a kill here every now you can see the vertical dispersion so imagine not having aiming system mod that helps you with that seven percent dispersion it's insane i mean i don't think that shot was that bad personally um so here i just you know take a shot at the uh 
Paul Tobe Pop. I don't know how to say the name. I'm not even gonna say it because I'm gonna get hated in the comments. You're supposed to say it, you know, blah blah. blah. I don't know how to say it. So we get the first kill of the game. At this point, I'm like, okay, I can play aggressive. There, I think the DD gets spotted in B here in a second, if I recall correctly. Yeah, right outside of me. So I see him. Um, I was already thinking about going through that little channel right there. And that just pretty much, like, cemented my thought process. Um, I'm not really scared of 1v1ing a Byron. As long as I don't give him um, broadside, I should be fine. Stack of the shots there. Kind of seeing if I can hit him. Uh, unfortunately, only get one overpin. And now we're sitting at 110 gay damage. Uh, oh, guys, if you've made it this far in the video, uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you did subscribe. I know you hear it every video. It helps me out. Um, be sure to leave a comment if you got any feedback or anything. And yeah. So we come around this mountain here, and I knew that there was going to be a cruiser somewhere to my left. I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the mini-map and looking at the last locations of the ships at all times. Um, and I knew, relatively speaking, there would be a cruiser right there. Now... It's a Miyoko. Miyoko has torpedoes. I'm pretty sure it does. About 80% sure the Miyoko has torpedoes. He shoots me with AP. Doesn't really matter. I kind of panic shot there. One of my shells. And one of them is going to be really short. But we hit the kill and get another Citadel. Um, now, this is the funny part right here. So all that's left is the Byron and the Gajamata. I don't know if I said that right. Don't make fun of me, okay? Don't make fun of me. I, I'm trying. So at this point, I'm like, all right, we're going to get some shots on the Byron. I kind of waited to see if he was going to turn, like, to go away from me. But unfortunately, he did not. Um, I didn't realize. I thought the uh, King George was a little bit more further to my right, but he wasn't. Um, so at some point here in the next couple seconds, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to shoot him. Get some pins, hopefully. Um, this, this ending here is pretty funny though, to be honest. The, the DD is going to be very upset, I think. Um, so I tried to speed up and then I slow back down to turn into the shells and hope that he doesn't, uh, Citadel me. See, like once you get close, then you, I can see where you want to take preventative maintenance. That was the only time this game that I've been shot at where, uh, my turret got knocked out. But I'm within eight kilometers of a German brawler battleship. So that's to be expected. Um, I stress you just want to snipe. So here we go. I get hit by like four, I think I was four deep water torpedoes, okay? And I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. And I'm not gonna be able to post this game. I get three more pins. I'm like, I'm definitely dead. He just shot AP at me, but I don't die. And we are about to win. All we need to do is kill a ship. And we won the game right before I died. When I tell you that I was stressed TF out, man, I was like, please, I do not want to die here. In the game, I was like, oh my God, I hope they kill the Byron. So again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, just to summarize, you're in a sniper battleship line. You want to sit back. Um, unfortunately, there probably will be situations to where you have to get... Uh, a little um a little you know more in the mix of it however i would try to avoid those situations especially in the early game when there's still a lot of ships alive hope you enjoyed the video guys um uh, be sure to like comment and subscribe if you don't like the video you can dislike it of course feel free to dislike it and uh if you don't mind though leave a comment to why you dislike the video and hopefully in the future if it's something to do with like editing quality or anything or even just the video in general maybe it wasn't informative enough for you uh, maybe in the future. This is my first like voiceover video. So I'm a little nervous. Um, so bear with me guys. Hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.